Hi, I'm Ian Portalupi, and welcome back to the Northland Workshop. If you're like me, you've got tons of clamps that you can use to hold pieces together near the edge of a workbench, but when it gets to be the center of a workbench, it gets a little more complicated. Well, I found this thing on eBay, and it is a Craig bench clamp. And what it is is a 10 inch by 10 inch steel plate that has a keyhole in it and this special bench clamp slides down into the keyhole and it allows me to clamp things in 360 degrees in the middle of the workbench. Now these things are really really handy for assembling face frames and stuff like that where you're trying to hold it together and drive pocket hole screws in without the thing misaligning. Sure, you can do it near the edge with a conventional clamp, but you're limited as to how far you can reach in. Plus, if it's a big face frame, you might not be able to lean all of it off the side. So I really want a way to clamp things together in the middle of the workbench, because then I get maximum support on things. What we're going to do today is install this plate in the workbench because it can be a little intimidating to route out a 10 inch by 10 inch square out of your workbench top. But I'm going to show you that with a really simple jig and a basic router, it's actually not that hard to get this thing flush with the top of the workbench. I've laid out where I want this plate to be and I made sure that it's squared to the front edge of the workbench and by doing so it's squared to all the other edges of the workbench and I traced a line around it and I drew a line where the keyhole needs to go and what this will allow me to do is inspect the workbench top for anything that might get in the way of routing out the recess this workbench is made up of three layers of plywood glued and nailed together and it's the nails that are going to cause me an issue if there are nails in this area and I hit them with the router bit it's going to wreck the router bit so the very first thing I need to check for is nails what I have is this little handheld metal detector and this thing is invaluable for checking use boards before you send them through the surface planer because a lot of times layers of dirt and paint will hide nails and other metal objects that wreck planer knives so I'm going to use the exact same thing for here to scan it for nails that I'm going to have to remove so the way this works is I just push the red button to turn it on and then I start scanning the area if I test it on this bolt head, you can tell it finds that really easily. So now I can start scanning. Oh, found something. So now. I can see that little divot right there, but I want to remind myself of that for when I dig the metal out. So I'm just going to circle all the nails I can find. Maybe that's the only one in here. Oh, wait, I found something. This antique slide hammer makes short work of pulling these brads out of the tabletop. Unfortunately, nail pullers such as this are no longer made, but if you go to enough yard sales, sooner or later you'll be able to pick one of these things up for $5. I've just finished marking out a line half of an inch in from where the edge of this plate is going to the reason I did this is I'm going to make a jig to guide the router bit for the perimeter of the plate 
but the router would fall in in the middle so I need to get the bulk of the material removed with the router freehand before I can put it on its little jig and do the outside part. I want to make sure that I don't come out too far freehand because I'm probably not going to get a perfectly straight line. So by setting it in half an inch, I'm guaranteed a buffer zone so that way I don't accidentally mar up the workbench top. At this point, I can go ahead and set the depth for the router bit. Now I'm using a three-quarter inch mortising bit to remove the bulk of the material because that happens to be the biggest diameter bit I have. The bigger is better comes to mind here because you want to remove as much material as quickly as possible. So to set the depth what I'm going to do is take the router, loosen up the depth stop. I'm going to get this right up out of the way for a second and I'm going to plunge down until the router bit just touches the surface of the workbench. That is essentially zeroed out right now because the router bit is touching the workbench. Now I need to adjust this, the thickness of this metal plate. And the easiest way to do that is to not measure at all, but to take one of these little stop turrets and I will go for this one right here and I'm going to put this metal plate on it put the stop bar down on and lock it now the distance between that stop bar and this metal plate are exactly the same so all I have to do is keep plunging the router in until it bottoms out on there and I'm at the exact depth of this metal plate. I've routed out the bulk of the material and I've brought it as close to the sharpie line as I can so all that's left is this half inch of material around the outside. Now as you can see my freehand routing skills leave a bit to be desired when it comes to routing a straight line so I don't want this to be the outside edge. Because of that I'm going to build a jig. The first step in building the jig is to put a piece of painter's tape on each edge of the metal plate. The reason I do that is I want the jig to be ever so slightly bigger than this plate so that way I can drop it in without having to hammer it into the workbench. The template's going to look something like this when it's done. And as you can see, these are just some scrap pieces that I decided to use for one more thing before they go in the wood stove. So I need a way to hold these things together so I can pick the whole template up and center it on that opening. And this is a Craig product after all so it seems only fitting that I use pocket hole screws to connect these scrap pieces together.
For this, you want to take your time and make sure you get this positioned so that way this butts up tight to the plate and this butts up tight to the plate. Then we want to go ahead and drive these screws and work our way around making sure everything's butted up tightly because the more accurate you are at setting up this little template, the better the end result's going to be in the workbench. I'm not gluing these joints because this is a one-time use jig and then I'm pulling these screws back out and reusing them for something else. I want to keep this corner of this plate in this corner of the template because if this plate isn't perfectly square, which I'm guessing it is square, but if it's not, I want to make sure this template is true to the plate. Again, I want to take my time and get everything lined up as tightly as possible. Once I know that's good, I can go ahead and paint this one down and screw it together. Again, rotate the entire thing as a unit. Make sure the final side is tight. There, we now have a template that perfectly matches this plate. I've just attached the plate where it's going to go, so that way I can now position this template where it needs to be. And you'll notice I've got pocket hole screws on these little outrunners on the template. And what I can do with those is go ahead and screw it down to the workbench top. Now that I have the template screwed down to the workbench top, I can go ahead and unscrew it. Really all I needed was to place these pocket screws in the workbench top. The reason I need to unscrew this is I need to take this off and put a couple spacers under it. The reason for the spacers is I need to pick this template up off the workbench top enough that the template routing bit I have will work with it. To better explain the issue, I've installed the template routing bit and I've set it to the correct height as if this template was sitting directly on the workbench. 
And as you can see, the ball bearing that's at the top that's supposed to go around the inside of the template is up inside the base. So it's not going to follow the template and I would make an absolute mess of things. Because of that, I need to get the template surface up so that way I can lower the bit enough to actually make it follow the template. Hence the strips of plywood. However, the strips of plywood make it so I can't locate this thing. So by locating it first, flush on the work surface, now I can use some longer screws and index back into the holes I just made and everything should line up just fine. To set the bit height, what I'm going to do is loosen up the clamp on the router and with it sitting in the corner, I'm going to just bottom out the bit so it touches the already routed out portion. Then I'm going to tighten it down. The final thing I need to do is to square up these round corners. And the easiest way I know to do that is with the special corner chisel. And what this is, is two cutting edges at 90 degrees with this little lip that hooks over the corner of the recess. And I can just take the hammer and it chops the corner square. Time for the moment of truth. Let's see how we did. I just put that in there. Hey, look at that. Nice and square and flush all the way around. That's perfect. Along with the plate and the clamp, the kit also came with an assortment of hardware in order to attach this to various surfaces. And it came with these four wood screws and this is what I'm going to use to anchor this thing in place. And now, this clamp just fits in like that. And I'm able to use it in all different directions in the middle of the workbench now. So I think this is going to come in very handy in the future.